Hello, my name is John Dexter and welcome. I hope I find you all well. Um, I, uh, with this lockdown, it sort of gave me an opportunity to do a few videos on uh, my ICM abstract photography. Uh, perhaps help you guys out a little bit if you're thinking of giving it a go. Um, one of the things that uh, I did have some questions about is what sort of movement do I use um, to capture my images? Uh, and this really, really does depend on the composition you're taking. Um, learning what sort of movement in the camera creates a certain effect um, is really just a learning curve um, because each composition um, sort of dictates roughly the sort of movement that you're going to use. Um, but having said that, um, what I'm going to do is run through a few of my images with you and show you the camera movements I picked um, uh, uh, which I thought suited um, that particular image. Uh, I actually went out in the field at the back of my house this morning and uh, did a little video on sort of different varying camera movements. Um, so I'm going to sort of link those up to each individual image um, uh, uh, to try and sort of give you a kick start as to when you look at a composition uh, you can sort of think yeah that's the sort of movement I think might suit that. But with ICM it is really uh, trial and error. Uh, you've got to sort of uh, try different camera movements, different speeds of the camera, uh, different uh, shutter speeds to see what sort of um, uh, a result it gives you in your image and is that what you're looking for is that the sort of thing you had in mind if it's not then what can I do to sort of improve it so as I say it is uh, a massive curve can't speak a massive learning curve um, but um, there are sort of some images there are sort of basics that you um, know that, that a certain camera movement is going to suit it and I hope that I can sort of try and help you with that today. So let's um, have a look at the first image and see where we go from there. The first thing I want to say is when I actually show you the camera movements that I've uh, taken a video of um, I have exaggerated a lot of them um, to give you uh, a good idea because some of the movements are so tiny you wouldn't even see me moving it. So I have exaggerated them. So um, when you see them, please don't think that uh, you know, you've got to move it that amount. Um, it does vary. Now I'm going to start off with this image because um, it's a very straightforward um, image as far as movement goes. Uh, I actually featured this in my last video but it is a, a, a good example. Now uh, as a rule of thumb with sailing boats I normally just do a straight uh, vertical um, movement with the camera. Um, having said that that's not always the case and I'm going to show you an image after this um, where, where it was slightly different. But it's a good starting point to just do a straight uh, down to up movement with the camera. Um, don't go the other way from up to down because the mast will disappear off the top of the image. Um, but uh, getting all, all the sort of image in the frame, um, you know, has the boat disappeared off the bottom of the image or has it disappeared off the top? Um, that really is just keep taking frame after frame with um, different starting points, different finishing points, um, different camera speeds um, and different amounts that you move the camera in. Um, having a look at the image on the back of the camera and sort of thinking, oh yeah, I did this or I did that. Um, and then alter your movement until you get roughly the sort of image that you're after. 
Um, but trust me, to get the image positioned um, perfectly is very, very difficult. And it's just, as I say, take shot after shot after shot until you get it right. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty um, straightforward camera movement. And I was really chuffed with the um, result it gave me. Um, I got the camera movement just right, which sort of gave me this painterly effect. But I'm now going to show you another uh, image of actually the same place, which is Christchurch Quay, um, with slightly different camera movements. And I'll show you the um, complete and utter difference it made. Now, this one, believe it or not, is exactly the same place, exactly the same composition. Um, mind you, I say that. I think it was taken a different time of year. I think this was taken in the summer, so there was um, more boats moored. Um, but you see the difference in, in the actual final image. Um, now, this, I'm pretty sure I did what I've just told you not to do. Um, go from top to bottom um, because the masts have disappeared off the top of the image but for this particular image I, I think it actually suits it. Can you see by the sort of swirl there in the clouds and that's pretty much the sort of camera movement I was using so it would have been from uh, top to bottom with a sort of movement off to one side if you like. Um, and look at the difference in in the image. Um, this is more surreal. I, I always think this sort of looked like galleons moored up. Um, I was sort of really chuffed with this. But it just goes to show that um, different camera movements um, and directions um, can give you a completely different image of the same composition. Now this one, believe it or not, was exactly the same composition. Um, and this was actually quite a straightforward movement of either left to right or right to left. Um, getting the speed right for this sort of image um, is very difficult. Again, just trial and error. Um, keep trying different uh, speeds that you move the camera in and see what sort of result it gives you. But yeah, I thought I'd show those three images because it really does give you an idea. Um, you can take uh, one composition um, three times and have three completely different results. OK, so we'll get off boats now <laughs> um, and get on to something that I'm never really successful with, and that is trees or woodlands. Um, not only is it very difficult to take woodland photography in conventional, but it's also very difficult um, in ICM. Um, but sometimes uh, you find a composition and you try different movements and it, it does seem to work and I think this was a a point in case or case in point which, which way is it I can't remember anyway you get what I mean um, so I look I looked at these there were about a group of two or three trees and I like the actual uh, fence posts and I like the way the ground dropped off so what I tried with this was a sort of up and down or down to up, I can't remember which way I did it, um, but with a wiggle uh, in the camera at the same time. And uh, in this particular case, it seemed to work. But again, um, don't take my word for it that that's the way you've got to take trees, you know. Try it different ways and see what sort of results you get. And what works for you. Okay, people. Um, don't really do too much of people. Um, but when I do, 
there really is, as far as I'm concerned, only one movement. Um, and that is just take the shot with a tiny vibration, almost like you can't hold the camera still. In actual fact, if you hold the camera at arm's length when you're taking a fairly a long exposure, um, which all my ICMs are taken with a neutral density filter, so it's giving me, um, depending on the amount that you want to move the camera in, because obviously if you're moving the camera more, you want more shutter time, um, but I'm, as a rule of thumb, I sort of aim for about half a second to a second, somewhere round about there. So if you hold the camera at arm's length, trust me, you will not be able to hold the camera still. And that actually, just that tiny movement, gives you enough for um, people. And um, this is the sort of image you end up getting, which I was actually really chuffed with. And there was another one in the same place, which I'll show you now, which is this one. Um, and this, this girl was actually walking past, whereas the other one was just standing still. But again, it was literally just a slight vibration, a slight movement in the camera um, that gives you this sort of result. And I find that sort of seems to work best with people. Okay, so this image um, is showing you the sort of a really, really abstract or wacky effects you can get with ICM. Um, I'm going to put up on the screen the camera movement that I would have used for this, which is really, really extreme camera movement. Now, believe it or not, this was a single shot in camera. There was nothing done to it other than just sort of tweak the colours in post. So, as I say, straight out of camera. But this is the sort of effect you can get with ICM. Um, and uh, with buildings, um, or rather castles and ruins, the only thing that I find does suit them is sort of quite extreme camera movements. Um, and th this is one that uh, uh, just seemed to work. It, it's, it's, it's really strange. I mean, I probably took quite a few hundred um, shots of this is actually Corfe Castle. Um, and most of, well, 99.9% .9 of them were absolute trash. Um, but occasionally one will sort of pop out at you, which seems to work. Okay, again, I'm going to put up on the screen now the camera movement I use for this image. Now, believe it or not, this was a tree in a field. Just a flat, straight field. Um, but by doing this sort of camera movement, um, I ended up getting this effect of the tree sitting on top of the hill. Um, so again, it just goes to show you the so different results you can get from different camera movements. But this, this is purely experimental. I did actually... Uh, look at this composition and I knew exactly um, what I was after um, and this was it um, but it probably took me probably three four hundred shots to get one that seemed to work um, so yeah again it's just um, shoot and shoot and shoot until you um, <coughs> get the results that you want with ICM, I love being able to pull things into images. Um, now, this looks as if it was a sort of really misty day or um, 
this was in the clouds. So in actual fact, it was a, a, um, a perfectly clear day. But by the sort of camera movements, which I'm going to show you that I would have used for this image, you end up pulling the clouds in, pulling them into the image. And you can see look, I, the water is sort of, it's almost like the water is lapping up against the sort of cliffs. And this is the sort of uh, results um, it gives you. I'm actually going to show you a couple more which have the same camera movements and the sort of effects that that gives you. Okay, this is one of them with this, exactly the same sort of movement. Now, this was a sunset. Um, and by moving the camera in that direction, I have dragged the sunset actually into the image. Um, which is, has given you this, this, I think, wonderful effect. But you have to look at the composition and uh, with camera movements like this, you think, right, what do I want to sort of drag into the image? Is it the clouds or is it the sunset? Um, you have to sort of assess the composition and, and try and decide um, exactly what, what end result you want. And when I went up to um, this old ruins, which is Knowlton Church, um, I knew exactly when I went up there that, that this is the sort of res end result I wanted. But I will show you one more. Okay, this is, um, again, pretty much exactly the same camera movements. Um, and this, this was uh, just a sort of uh, a load of rocks going out into the water. Um, like a sort of little, I think it's a breakwater. Um, and by doing these ca this particular camera movement, I've had dragged the water over the rocks, um, w which has given this effect. So yeah, that, that's sort of three examples of just this one type of camera movement, which gives you um, the sort of dragging in of the, either the clouds or the water or the sunset. Again, you, you sort of assess the composition and you think, you know, what, what do I want from it, you know, and what sort of camera movement will work. I'm going to make this my last one um, because I think I've pretty much shown you um, all the sort of pretty much the camera movements um, that I've sort of used. Um, but, you know, if you can think of your own, um, give it a go and see see what sort of results it gives you. But this is a prime example of pretty much not moving the camera at all other than um, letting the actual image itself make abstract effect. And this was literally a, a train in Swanage and I was standing on the bridge and I just let the movement of the train make the image for me. Um, I would have probably just sort of jiggled the camera very slightly or, or probably not even bothered, you know, this was probably about a half a second exposure. So by holding the camera, um, as I was explaining with the people, um, it sort of blurs the image anyway. But yeah, this is a prime example of, you know, when you've got a moving subject, it can very often make um, the abstract image for you. I think that'll do me. Um, I hope this has sort of given you um, some ideas that when you go out and you see a composition you can sort of think back to what I've said and hopefully it'll give you a kickstart as to uh, get a good image. If you've enjoyed it please leave a like below. Um, to all my subscribers I thank you very very much it really gives me the encouragement to sort of keep making videos um, if you haven't already it would be much appreciated if you would consider doing so um, and hit that notification bell to see any future videos I put up um, all the links to my website and Instagram are below so yeah, I think all that's left to be said is stay well, stay safe. Until the next time, bye for now.